Okay, YouTube, uh, just to let you know where our class is at, uh, one of my students just said that he could cook minute rice in 59 seconds. And another one of my students said that they are capable of pouring the perfect amount of milk into a bowl of cereal. So, we are... Does... <laughs> Does any okay? All right. Gift. You are gifted in many ways. I would say you have gifts greater than that. Does anybody else have an amazing ability that they need to share at this time? No. Okay. If you're if you're up for risk taking that day, then pour the milk in first. And then the cereal to try to get the right amount. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, well, I you'd have to start plunging it. So. Okay. All right. How about you pour the cereal? How about you pour the cereal and the milk into a bottle like this? Like into a water bottle, and then you shake it up. Okay. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah, you don't want to ruin anything in Captain Crunch. So, yes. Lauren, we made you smile. You're welcome. All right. My job is done. Here we go. Big lesson today. If you can understand today's lesson and execute this lesson, you will be able to get 100% on this next test. Today is the hardest part of this unit. There are parts that you will get confused with, but you'll be able to work through those points of confusion. This is sometimes one that people get kind of hung up with. And so we look at this scenario with the ambiguous case of side-side angle, otherwise known as donkey, right? Uh, yesterday we said angle, 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 no solution. Angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, one solution, no big deal. And then we looked at this case where you have the side opposite the angle is longer than the other given side. That was your worksheet, correct? And there was just one solution. So everything on the left side of your worksheet was one of the first two scenarios with angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. And then on the right side of the worksheet, it was side, side, angle, but the opposite angle was always longer than the other given side. So let's see what happens here when that's not the case. Suppose the opposite leg is shorter. You might come up with two solutions, and here's why. This is my lower side. I don't know exactly what the length is, but we know that, say, the angle is 40 degrees. And we'll say that it has a length of 10. And we'll say that this side has a length of 8. So I'm going to draw a segment with a length of 8. Okay, that's eight. We all good? You see how that can form a triangle. Here's the problem. That has a length of eight. So does this triangle. See that? Both have a length of eight, ten, and an angle of forty question is which triangle is it referring to that's where we create a problem and that's why we have two solutions that's why side side angle does not work out you can see the red triangle this angle is acute but this triangle so if I I draw again this side and I rotate it on that pendulum, let it swing over to the other side. That also has a length of 8 and it has an obtuse angle. Do you see the two triangle solutions? It's important that you see both triangle solutions and in both cases. I have side, side, angle where it's 40, 10, and 8. We don't know which one it's talking about, so therefore we solve for two triangles. That's just the geometry. We'll get to the actual trig here in a second. Let's look at a situation where there's no solution. 
still have an undetermined length on the bottom. I'll draw a 40 degree angle and I'll draw a side length of 10. We'll say that the opposite side is shorter, like this one was 8, but this time I'm going to draw it with a length of 1. Okay? So, uh, Carter, you help me out, okay? Is that, if, if the other length is 10, is this longer or shorter than 10? Longer, okay? So you tell me when you think I got about a length of 1. Okay. Somewhere about here, right? Oh, is this going to reach down the other side? Oh, it's struggling, isn't it? It's like, shoot, I cannot make it to the other side. Uh, I am an impossible triangle. Okay? So, we got two short, impossible triangle. So if the side opposite is shorter than the other given side, then we might have two triangles, or it might be just followed too short and we have no triangle. We're going to have to try to figure that out. Flip it over. Or you might have this kind of situation where you say you have 40 degrees. And you have 10, and this side is 13. I again have a side side angle. What do you notice about the opposite side in this scenario? It's longer than the other given side. So if you would try to create that same length, and you were to pendulum it over to the other side, that doesn't exactly work, does it? You, you lose your 40-degree angle. That 40-degree angle is then gone. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the, the problem says that we begin with a 40-degree angle. So if I pull that over, the 40 degree, that 40-degree angle is gone. It doesn't make a triangle anymore. So that's why you only have one solution if the side opposite is longer than the other given side. So let's start to solve some of these pieces, okay? So solve the following triangles. Uh, begin by classifying which five cases it will be. I say five because it's never going to be angle, angle, angle. So um, angle, 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 we won't deal with that because there's, there's really no solutions. So I have uh, triangle A, B, C. I know A is 42 degrees and side A is 22 and B is 12. Which of the five scenarios is this? Angle, side, angle, side, angle, side. What is it? Angle, side, side. Donkey, right? So we got a problem. I go to my decision tree. Is the side opposite angle longer or shorter than the other given side? It's longer. And the decision tree says there's just one solution. Use the law of signs. No big deal. We got it. Let's set up our solutions. A, B, and C. Little A, little B, little C. I gave you this as practice yesterday. Hopefully you're able to work through that worksheet. Your assignment today is going to be shorter, a little bit more challenging, but definitely shorter. The reason why I gave you more problems yesterday is because you need to be quick at this. So as we review, sine of 42 over equals sine of B over 12. Okay, I want you guys to be quick at this stuff. I don't want to spend a ton of time trying to figure this out. So you have to do this a lot. I multiply both sides by 12. 12 sine of 42 divided by 22. What's the biggest value that sine could be? What's the smallest? Negative 1. Is this between 1 and negative 1? Yeah, 0.36 is between 1 and negative 1. So that's a reasonable answer. I can inverse sine, and I come up with 21.4. So B is 21.40 degrees. What can I now find? 
Yeah, 180 minus that answer, minus 42, gives me 116.59 degrees. Now I solve for side C by using law of sines. Sine of 42 over 22 equals sine of 116.59 divided by C. Twenty-nine forty. I do my check. Largest angle, largest side. Smallest angle, smallest side. We're good to go. Reasonable. Everybody got that? That was reviewed from yesterday, right? Let's see what's not reviewed from yesterday. I always start by drawing my triangle, A, B, C, 85 degrees, 15, and 25. Is this side-side angle again? It is. We've got a donkey situation going on. What we do is we look at the chart. Is the side opposite angle longer or shorter than the other given side? Shorter. Uh-oh. Shorter, we end up over here. It says, when solving for the missing angle, if sine is greater than 1, then there is no solution. Or, when solving for the missing angle, if sine is less than 1, then there are two solutions. So if we end up with the scenario, we either got no solution or got two solutions. We can't tell you right now which one it's going to be. The only way you know is by trying to solve it. When I set up sine of 85 over 15 equals sine of B over 25, I'll multiply both sides by 25. 25 sine of 85 divided by 15, boom, 1.6603. Can sine B greater than 1? No way. When you see that sine is greater than 1, we know it's no solution. Notice it says, when solving for the missing angle, if sine is greater than 1, then there's no solution. So you could say, no solution. Or you could say, impossible triangle. I want to be clear. If I go second sine inverse of 1.66, my calculator gets all upset. It's like I can't do that. I've got a domain error. Even if you click go to, it doesn't like that 1.66 value. So let's try something smaller. Maybe it'll like 1.2, huh? Nope, still doesn't like it. You can try to have some fun with it here. How about 1.0001? Maybe that will squeak it in, huh? Maybe that will work. Nope. Maybe we could try, um, let's just go straight up one. We'll just put a zero at the end there and see if we can see what happens with this guy now. So, hey, what do you know, 90 degrees? All of a sudden it likes one. Okay, so that's how your sine function works. Let's try the last one. We will do the two on the back side, but they take about 35 seconds each. They're really short. We have a triangle, A, B, C. Uh, we have 20.5 degrees. B is 12, B is 31. Does everybody agree that we have a side-side angle triangle? I've got side-side angle. Is the side opposite longer or shorter than the other given side? Shorter. We might have two solutions or no solution. We don't know until we set it up. Sine of 20.5 divided by 12 equals sine of B divided by 31. What? Like, I mean that you will have to, instead of writing down one triangle, you'll have to write down two triangles. 
Yes, and we will show you what that looks like because this one will be a two solution problem. You don't like that? 31 sine of 20.5 divided by 12, and I get 0 0.9047 is equal to sine of B. Can sine be equal to 0 0.9047? Yeah. Your decision tree says if sine is less than 1, then there are two solutions. Here's where you got to get down to business. It says, at this point, set up two possible triangle solutions. Everybody always says, how do I know when to set up two triangles? You do it right now. When you go through the side-side angle and you identify that it's uh, shorter than the other side and you come up with this, then we say we got triangle 1 and we got triangle 2. A, B, C, little a, little b, little c. A, B, C, little a, little b, little c. I trust you. All right, let's do it. Angle A is 20.5 for both triangles. Because we know that the triangle is 20.5 degrees for angle A. We also know that side A is 12. We also know that side B is 31. It's the other parts that we don't know. I'll sign inverse and see what I get. I get 64.78. This is where you have to think a little bit deeper and get a little bit smart, folks. Look at this one. Notice the two triangles. One had an acute angle. The other one had obtuse angle. So as you look at our uh, decision tree, it says solve. Triangle 1 will have theta be an acute angle. Did we just come up with an acute angle or an obtuse angle? Acute, 64 degrees, right? Okay. Triangle 2 will have theta be an obtuse angle. To find theta, do sine inverse. We already did that. To find the obtuse angle, take 180 minus theta. So that's what we're going to do right now. We've got this angle right here of 64 degrees. Okay. So 64.78. To find B for the other triangle... We do 180 minus the answer, and we get 115.22. Now, do we have enough information to find angle C for each one? Yeah. So pause for a second so you can understand just a little bit more in-depth math, because right now you guys think that it's kind of magic. Watch this. Okay, when I took sine inverse of 0 0.9047, I got 64.78, right? So if I take the sine of 64.78, what should I get? I should get 0 0.9047, right? If I inverse and that gave me that, then when I take the sine of that, it should give me 0 0.9047. Let's see if that happens. Did I get it? Well, now watch this. Suppose I take the sine of the other one, 115.22. Oh, what do you notice? I get the same stinking thing. Well, if I did the sine inverse of 0.9046, I got 64. Then if I do the sine inverse of this, so I'll go, I'll go sine inverse of... Of that answer, hopefully I'll come up with the 115. I get the 64. Why don't I get the 115? Here's why. We're assigned positive. Which quadrant? 1 and 2. Where this is 90 degrees and this is 180, right? So our angles here, acute or obtuse? Acute. Over here they are 
obtuse. Look, your calculator comes up with the 64 degree one, but it doesn't come up with the 115 degree one. It doesn't know which one you want. They both have the same sign value, they're both 0.9. But it only knows to grab the one out of the first quadrant. We had to find the one in the second quadrant. That's what's happening. Uh, th so this angle right here is 64 degrees, and then this angle here is 64 degrees. So therefore, they have the same angle to the x-axis, which gives them the same sign value. It's just that sign's positive in both quadrants. It doesn't know which one you want, so it can only generate the first one. Okay, that's why you have the two solutions. Hopefully that made sense. If it doesn't, doesn't, I'm sorry, watch the video again. Okay, let's find C. What do I do to find C? 64.78. Minus 20.5. And I get 94.72. And then how about uh, angle C for the other one? Do the same thing, right? Yeah. So 180 minus 115.22 minus 20.5, and I get 44.28. Guys, I just want to see all that because sometimes people think that these formulas are magic. They're not. It all makes sense with the unit, the circle of life. Unit circle gives us everything. It's beautiful. All right, can I find side C now? How do I find side C? Yeah, sine of 20.5. Over 12 equals sine of 94.72 divided by C. Uh, 31, no, 34.15. Do those check out longest side, largest angle? Yep. So then I'm going to do the next one, sine of 20, 0.5 over 12, equals sine of 44.28 divided by C. And I got that exact same thing plugged in my calculator. I just have to change the 94 to... Uh, 44.28. Again, I like to be quick quick with my work efficiency exactly. Uh, 23.92 because, you know, we all got ACT tests and stuff to take. Not too bad, huh? Can I show you what not to do real quick before I flip over the other side? Some people will set up the first triangle and solve it in its entirety. And they're like, I don't know what to do for the second triangle now. Notice that it was when we were solving for angle B that that's where we did the subtraction of 180. That then led us to solve for the rest of it. So that's where the important step is. Okay? All right, flip it over. A, B, C. This is different because these angles are obtuse. We're given angle A is 105, side A is 4, and then side B is 20. What? Why? Do you agree that only one obtuse angle may be in a triangle? Do you agree that angle A then has to be the largest angle? So... It must have the largest side, too, doesn't it? Does it have the largest side? So I don't even need to do the problem. I just say no solution. Now, you're wondering why I showed you that, because some, some people won't think that through, and they'll say, okay, well, this is shorter than the other given side, so I'll go down the decision tree. No, if it's an obtuse angle, then, then that's, it can't be shorter than the other given side. If I have an obtuse angle, again, like say 152 degrees for angle A, angle B, angle C, 11.4, 8.6, is that possible? Yeah. This is a side-side angle triangle, right? Is the side opposite longer or shorter than the other given side? 
Well, it's longer. So how many solutions do you have? Just one. So you just solve it like normal. Law of sine is one solution. So that really covers all the different types of triangles that you could see for a side-side angle. That way we get rid of this donkey situation and you guys are going to feel good to go. But please use this flow chart. Again, I didn't pull this out of a book. I never saw it. It was never given to me when I was learning. I created it so you guys can go deeper in these problems and understand exactly what's going on. So please reference that. That's what you're going to get to use on your test. I have your assignment today. You do not have to do the first two example problems. It's going to be shorter than yesterday's. On today's assignment, there's going to be two that are no solution, two that are one solution, and two that are two solutions.